Hello everyone, I'm Paul Cardall. I'm excited to read to you the New Testament. We're gonna go chapter by chapter, and in this introduction, I wanna give you some background. The reason I wanna do this is because my parents instilled in me since I was a young kid to read scripture. And this is something I've been doing ever since then, and now it's something I wanna share with you. The NASB Bible is a powerful, wonderful translation. It's what scholars are considering one of the best next to the King James. It's a little easier to understand. So that is the Bible I've chosen to read. And if you have an NASB, please follow along. If you don't, you can download one, you can go get one. This is the Bible that uh, I wanna be able to share with you. Now some background, I'm from Salt Lake City. Some of you may not know who I am. It's irrelevant because what matters most is the scripture. But I was born with only half a heart. My parents tell me that a doctor knew to find a surgeon to operate on me. And less than a day old, they operated on me. They found I only had a single functioning ventricle. And I was in and out of hospitals my entire childhood. I'd always hear the doctors talking to my parents saying, we just don't think he's going to live very long we're not sure we don't know what's next and so i had a somewhat of some fear in me and then of course my parents would be optimistic and they would teach me about the purpose of life through their faith and it sustained me it helped me i learned how to talk to god in prayer we read scriptures as a family and though it wasn't always fun to get up in the morning and do that it created a habit in me that I am forever grateful for, uh, for my parents for doing that. Now, I had countless surgeries, and with those, I did not know if I'd ever live long enough to retire. So I was not thinking about retirement. I was thinking about the next life, what happens after we die. And so obviously, as a teenager, you maneuver through all the philosophies, all the ideas, and I kept coming back, always coming back to the New Testament and to what is written not only in the four Gospels but by the Apostles who knew Jesus who followed Jesus who was with Jesus and whose writings uh, have been assembled these books into what is now the Bible and so without further ado let's get right into the book of Acts uh, we're reading from the NASB Obviously, it says the book of Acts provides the basic history of the spread of Christianity during the 30 years immediately following the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It serves as a link between the Gospels and the letters. It can be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because it teaches about the coming and work of the Spirit. Now, who wrote the book of Acts? Although the author does not name himself, evidence outside the scripture and inferences from the book itself lead to the conclusion that the author was Luke. A likely date for the book of Acts is AD 63. Now, what is the theme in the message of the book of Acts? The theme of the work is best summarized in 1.8. Luke weaves together different interests and emphasis as he relates the beginnings and the expansion of the church the design of the book revolves around one key persons peter and paul two important topics and events the role of the holy spirit pioneer missionary outreach to new fields conversion the growth of the church and life in the christian community three significant problems conflicts between jew and gentile persecution of the church by some Jewish elements, trials before Jews and Romans, confrontations with Gentiles, and other hardships in the ministry. And four, geographical advances from Jerusalem to Rome. Let's begin. Introduction, verse one. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. 
to these he also prevented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God gathering them together he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for what the father hath promised which he said you heard of from me for John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now so when they had come together they were asking him saying Lord is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel he said it is not for you to know times or epochs which the father has fixed by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth after he had said these things he was lifted up while they were looking on and a cloud received him Jesus out of sight and as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going behold two men in white clothing stood beside them they also said men of Galilee why do you stand looking into the sky this Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olive, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, that is, Peter and John, and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers at this time Peter stood up in the midst of the brethren a gathering of about 120 persons were there together and he said brethren the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit foretold by the mouth of David concerning Judas who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus for he was counted among us and received his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the price of his wickedness and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his intestines gushed out. And it became known to all who were living in Jerusalem so that their own language, that field was called Hakeldama, that is field of blood for it is written in the book of Psalms let his homestead be made desolate and let no one dwell in it and let another man take his office therefore it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us that the time that the Lord went in and out among us beginning with baptism of John until the day that he was taken up from us one of these must become a witness with us of the resurrection so they put forward two men Joseph called Barsabbas who was also called Justus and Matthias and when they prayed and said you Lord who know the hearts of all men show which one of these two you have chosen to occupy this ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place and they drew lots for them and the lot fell to Matthias and he was added to the eleven apostles end of chapter one